so okay, the buff, Buffet Boys yeah. YouTube channel. You guys co-own that like 50-50 or what's what is the deal with that? Because you still drop your shit on. Yeah, that. so pretty much it's me, Puya, and Mikey. Okay. So Mikey the Magician, he produces for us, records us, we're my best friends. Right, yeah, yeah, I know Mikey. And yeah, we just all can put whatever we want on it. And if we have like another artist that we want to put, we all have to be like, all right, cool, that's fine. Really? So somebody like Kill Switch is not signed to Buffet Boys collectively. That's just like one artist that's associated with one. So Puya handles Kill Switch. You get okay. me? So like, that's Puya's project that he's doing with him. Okay, interesting. So then, but when the YouTube check comes at the end of the month, where does the money go, or is, it, is each individual piece of content claimed by whoever owns? Yeah. So he where, wherever he distributes his music through, it's all claimed through there. Okay. So all the money goes there. That makes sense. Who you you have an artist now too? Yeah. Little Jerry. Yeah. Where where'd that come from? So my man's one of my uh, videographers put me in contact with him. I'm like, yo, he's hard. He's from Hialeah. He's from um, like maybe 25 minutes away from where I'm from. Oh, nice. And I saw him. He's like 18. That's funny because the most ratchet ass chick that we were with the other day Hialeah. in Miami was from <laughs> Hialeah. And everybody in the chat was like, oh, she's from there. I can tell. Yeah, so man's from Hialeah. But he's good. He, he just turned 18. He just got out of jail. Okay. He's lit. How'd you guys meet though? Um, I just hit him up on Twitter. I mean, on Instagram. I'm like, yo, you're really fire. <clears throat> and then we just met up. And it just worked out. Like, was that something you always been thinking about is wanting to sign an artist or work with artists? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think I've called out artists in my career until that's Puya. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, cool. Now let's actually like turn it into like a, a business. You get me? Right. Definitely. When the Take A video went on the Buffet Boys channel, though, what was the process of how that happened? All right, so I had hit up Take A like maybe like a month before, right? And I feel like I've asked you this question on this podcast before, <laughs> but that I'm completely forgetting. So fuck it, because probably you guys have forgot to. <laughs> so I hit up Take A like a month before, right? Because my homie Marcus, who's Puyi's DJ, put me in contact with him. He's from Texas. Uh -huh. And I was going to sign him to Buffet Boys to be an artist on it. Wow. And then he went to, I think, Jersey or something, right? But I had no idea he was on the run. Uh -huh. I didn't know shit was going on. Right. He's like, all right, cool. The day before he got arrested, he's like, yo, I'm going to fly to Miami tomorrow. Um... Pick me up from the airport, blase, blase. Picks up, gets picked up by, uh, I think, the U.S. Marshal or some shit. Uh -huh. And then his homie, Ezra, hits me up. Like, yo, he still wants you to drop the video for him. So then he sent it to me and we dropped it. But I was going to sign Take to Buffet Boys. Wow. He so, was going to come to Miami. So And you never even actually met him in real life? Never met him. And, without through phone call. And you guys aren't making any money off that, even no. though it's on the channel making a shitload of money? Whoever the he, money's not going to you. Whoever he um, distributed that song with, they're the ones making the money. That is such a crazy, like just the most bizarre situation that I could ever think of. That like that video ended up on that channel for that reason. And like, I don't know, like anyone who knows about you and Puya and then knows about Take It would like see that. And, like, like, what the I, fuck? Why the fuck is this video on this channel? It's so Dude, it's I so literally strange. told Puya and Mikey, I was like, yo, this song's going to blow up. Yeah. And they were like, ah, if you think so, do it. And then I was like, trust me. And then boom. Knowing what I know now, if I had heard that song, I would have been like, oh my God, like you got to sign. I, I guess I didn't really know about it until the song was big. Because there was some people like Yachty and shit who were like doing shows with him in Texas and stuff. I remember them telling me and like he was just another rapper to them for a while before. Yeah, he that's blew before up. he blew up. That's when he was like. Yeah. Yeah. Bananas. That's just crazy. Um, OK, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess when I'm trying to think about the whole trajectory that your career has kind of been on. I mean, when did you actually get off drugs? It was two and a half years ago? Yeah, literally. And what, what were you dealing with or what led up to you wanting to get off drugs at that point? So honestly, when Peep died, I was like, oh mm. shit. I, I still did drugs after he died. I'm not going to bullshit you. Like a year after he died, I still did drugs. But I'm like, damn, like bro died. Shit's getting crazy now. And then I was like, you, realistically, you can't be on drugs till you die. You get me? Like yeah. I got to quit, so I might as well quit now. Mm. I'm like, shit, I just picked up my pants and did it. You just cold turkey, stop drinking lean and stop so taking pills So what I stopped doing is I was on Oxy and lean, right? Oh, wow. So I stopped doing perks and Oxy and all that bullshit. I started drinking more lean, right? So I wouldn't withdraw too hard. And then I withdrew off lean after all that. Wow. What was the hardest one? Um, Probably the perks because they're way stronger. Right. But I was withdrawing for what? Like maybe like two months or something. Uh-huh. And did you have to kind of stay in the crib or were you able to keep working and be on the road or, and shit like that? Um... I definitely had to take a break for like a month, not doing shit. You get me? Uh -huh. For the first week, not week, like for the first month, just dog shit. You get me? Mm. Like mental withdrawals, like you're throwing up, you shit yourself every 10 minutes. But yeah, it was like a month and then, yeah. And then you just start to feel better. and Yeah. I mean, as time went on, you get me like better and better, but not all the way like that quick. Right. Like I was still feeling shit for like six months, maybe not physically, but mentally. Definitely. Were were you losing weight at that time, or did getting off drugs change uh, your diet? Or bro, when or, I was on drugs, I was bloated. 
Right. I was bloated as shit. So you didn't even necessarily have to be eating crazy, but it just made your yeah, whole body all fucked up. Yeah, I was just bloated off all up. the soda and like lean and shit. Yeah, like definitely. Big. And okay. so, so when you got off of it, did you start eating more because all of a sudden you feel healthier? Or? No, the same shit. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't, you didn't just like naturally lose weight by getting off the lean? Cause I don't think so. I know a lot of people who got a big ass lean belly and they stop drinking lean and it just shrinks and it goes away right away. I mean, I always have a belly, right? But I think I deflated. <laughs> right. Because have you seen me pictures before? I looked like I had those, um, you know, those rubber wings when you swim for babies. Right. It looked like I had that all over. Okay. I feel you. Um, but so did you, at, at a certain point, you got real serious about eating better and shit, yeah, right? I did keto. Okay. So I was 340 and I went all the way. That's when I saw in New York. Yeah. And I went down to like 270, 260. Uh huh. And then I fucked it up and jumped back to 320, and now I'm back at, like, 305. Okay, so it's been kind of jumping around. Yeah, so, dude, I like food. Yeah. And I just got this new food show with Rolling Loud that we're filming. Really? Yeah, so it's me and Rolling Loud, and we're just going around, like, eating, cooking with the chefs, and tasting food and stuff. That's dope. I feel like that's probably been something you've, like, always kind of been thinking about. Yeah, I've always wanted to. Like, before I got into rap, I wanted to go to culinary school. Right. Who right. are you influenced by in terms of, like, food content on TV or YouTube? Um, well, when I was growing up, I watched everything on the Food Network, right? right? But honestly, like, hats off to, like, Action Bronson. Yeah, he's the first one that comes to mm-hmm. mind. is Because it's, it's like there, there's so much food content on the internet that if you are going to make food content, it's just, like, extremely competitive of, like, yeah, how Yeah, but the thing, too, bro, like, there's a bunch of, like, I don't know. When I see people, I'm like, all right, I can either trust your food taste or your food taste is dog shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of them, like, especially on, like, these TikTok fooders, yeah. dog shit food taste. It's all like personality at a certain point because yeah. sometimes I'll be watching like a, a food show thinking that it looks interesting or clicking on a YouTube video and it's like, th- this is like every food show ever. Like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so, go- oh my God, it's so good. It's like, why am I watching this? Like, I, you know, like, like I don't need you to tell me it's good. Like, give me some kind of fucking insight. Yeah. But when you watch like Anthony Bourdain or whatever, that's a real talent right there. Like he had a real ability to like help you learn about the food. Yeah, I like Andy Redane. I love Guy Fieri. Yeah. I think he's lit. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> I have a bottle of fucking uh, Guy Fieri steak sauce in my fridge that I look at every single day and just think about what a hero he's he is. He's an icon. So, so our show that we want to do is like kind of like that. You I was like in Club cooking. Live with, with Guy Fieri for the record. For real? In Gucci Mane's section. Last weekend when you were in Miami? No, like a couple years ago. But I got a photo with him and it was like, I'm That's drunk crazy. as fuck. Just like, bro, I love you. You're the fucking man. That's like the highlight of your life. Club live with Guy Fieri. It was up there, yeah. Like, why is Guy Fieri in fucking uh, in, in Gucci Mane section in the first place? That's lit. Shaq was there and shit, too. I'm like, <laughs> this is like, the, I'm never going to be in an environment like this ever again. Yeah, but okay. So Guy Fieri is another one that you like? Yeah, I love Guy Fieri. He brings the energy. I like Bronson too. You know what I mean? Like, he put me on his, uh, you know, his show Fuck That's Delicious? Mm-hmm. He put me on his season finale. Right. I was like, oh, shit. That was like a highlight. I was like, oh, fuck. And that's been crazy to see him step away from doing it with Vice and start dropping it on YouTube on his own channel. Like, he's kind of doing it more independent or like, yeah, lower he has budget a fan now. base. He can do it. You know what I mean? He's a cult. Yeah. I think the Vice thing wasn't great for him. Like, he, he felt like it was going to be huge when he did it, but I don't think he ended up being very hyped on working with them. Yeah, he can do it by himself. Right. Definitely. What was that like, though, when you did that episode with him? What did you guys eat? What the hell did we eat? It's been I a think, while since I've seen it. I think we made pasta. He had some wine, some other shit. But I, I was just, I don't, like, look up to a lot of people, but Bronson's definitely, like, you definitely paved this lane. You get me? Besides him and, like, Big Pun, I think. Mm. Like, they definitely, like, opened this up. Like, oh, shit, like, you're one of my idols. Yeah. And especially just the fact that he... You know, his style of rap and shit is never going to be, like, the number one. He's not going to have a number one record or whatever. But he's just, like, stayed focused on his own, his own lane, but then, like, built all this other shit yeah. on top and of like, it. And, like, dude, he had a cult following. I mean, like, yeah. he probably sells a shitload of merch. I've been to a show of his, like, it sells out like he's good. Mm, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely an inspiration for sure. For I, I see a lot of people that I think are kind of influenced by the lane that he sort of opened up. Definitely. Um, okay, so you've been working on the show with Rolling Loud. Yeah. What, what uh... Oh, you think that the conversation was about like you losing weight, so you feel like that kind of negatively contributed to it? Yeah, you know, I had to eat, you know, gain the weight, fucked it up, but now like when I'm not filming for them, I'm like watching what I eat, and then boom, I go fuck it up. Yeah, definitely. Like for Rolling Loud New York right now, I think we have like 25 restaurants lined up. Really? Yeah. That's always what I'm thinking when I'm watching food hey, shows. Hey, if you're there, you should come. Come eat with us. Oh, I keep thinking about whether I should go or not. It sounds so hectic, but. <laughs> That's what I always think when I'm watching food shows and I'm watching them just eat like eight fucking huge meals in a day. And I'm just like, bro, I don't think I could handle that. Like, this is the thing, right? I think you're supposed to just take bites. Yeah. But I'm a fatty. For the camera. Yeah, but I'm a fatty, so we're going to finish everything. That's then, not how I eat. Fucked. Yeah. Like, if I got a burger and fries, I'm going to eat the burger and yeah. then I'm going to eat every single fry. 
It might if, feel like a pussy. If you really are doing food content, you take a couple bites for the, for the camera, and then you put it down. But that's, how, that's how you know you can trust my food taste, because I'm going to finish the whole plate. <laughs> You're going to gain 20 pounds that week. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> for sure. I respect it. Um, okay, so that kind of... Did you ever get like real into exercise, or were you more I focused on the exercise. diet I side of things? Exercising. Really? Can't do it. Dude, mainly because my hair. You get me? My hair gets fucked up. I got to call my hair lady, redo it. Right. My hair exercising. Not my thing. Yeah. Oh, that fucks the hair up. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't think of that. I mean, at least for me, you get me? Like, it'll get frizzy. I'm fucked. I can't, like, wash it every day. And then, yeah. 